Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over one of our introductory Algebra 2 presentations focusing on how to apply the order of operations in simplifying expressions. Don't forget there are four practice problems at the end of this tutorial that we'd like you to try out in order to demonstrate that you've mastered what we've covered. All right, before we get started, let's go ahead and do a real quick review on the order of operations and then we're gonna apply it to the problem solving process, okay? So the order of operations are as follows. Um, it's captured by the acronym PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, okay? All right, um, so what does the PEMDAS mean? You might remember P means you do the parenthesis, the operation in the parenthesis first. Okay, next you take care of the exponents. And then if you have multiplication and division, you do those two operations at the same time. Okay, multiply and divide, but what order do you do it? You multiply and divide from left to right. So whichever one comes first out of these two, you do it first uh, when you're going from left to right in the expression. A and S basically means you add and subtract. These two occupy the same level on the PEMDAS hierarchy. So you add and subtract at the same time. That's, these are the last operations you do but you do it from left to right, just as you do with the uh, multiplication and division operation. So this is basically what um, the order of operations are. Please excuse my dear and Sally. All right, let's take a look at some examples. The first one is as follows. Let's write down what the instructions are. We're to simplify the following, okay? Simplify the following. Now let's say you have the numerical expression given by 2 and a third minus 1 half minus 1 fourth plus 2 third and you have this entire number divided by 1 over 2. All right, so our goal is to simplify this expression right here. Okay, so first things first, uh, since we're combining the fractions, we want to make sure that they are all in the same form, preferably your improper fraction form whenever you have a combination of mixed numbers and proper fractions, okay? So we have this mixed number here. We want to express it as an improper fraction. So it's easy for us to find the LCD and carry out all the relevant operations with ease. So we'll multiply 3 by 2, which is 6 plus 1, which is 7. So we have 7, th uh, seven thirds minus. Now, this operation in the parentheses is what we're going to be working uh, with first. All right. So we want to deal with how to subtract two fractions, 1 half minus 1 fourth. And then we have plus 2 third and the entire thing divided by 1 half. All right. So, um, how do we add two fractions? Well, we have to make sure that their denominators are common. They both, they both have denominators equal to the LCD of both denominators. Well, since they're different, let's find what the LCD is. The LCD is of two and four is four. So to make sure that both denominators are four, we're gonna multiply the first fraction, one half, with two in the numerator and the denominator. So both fractions will have the same LCD. Okay, so we have 7 third minus, uh, you multiply this, 2 over 4 minus 1 over 4 plus 2 third, and that's divided by 1 half. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify that fraction in the parentheses there. So we're going to have 7 over 3 minus 2 fourths minus one fourth, you subtract the numerator, one over four, and keep the denominator, okay? Plus two third. Now, how do you divide by a fraction? Dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction. Remember KCF, keep, change, flip, 
So we keep the numerator, change the division to a times, and flip the denominator to 2 over 1. All right, so that's a neat little shortcut for dividing by fractions. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and simplify this parenthesis operation following, please excuse my Dan Sally. And then we'll multiply by 2, which is the final step uh, that we'll execute. Now, if you take a look at the fractions, we have 7 thirds minus 1 fourth plus 2 third. You will notice that the first and third fractions have the same denominator. So those two can be combined. So 7 third plus 2 third, you add the numerator, which gives you 9 over 3, 9 thirds minus 1 fourth. And we're still multiplying this by 2. Okay. All right. So, um... To combine these two fractions in the parentheses, we're going to find the LCD. The LCD of 3 and 4 is 12. That is the smallest number that both of them can go into evenly. So we need to make these two denominators equal to 12. So to accomplish that, we'll multiply this by 4 top and bottom. And then this number on the right, we'll multiply it by 3 top and bottom. Notice carefully what happens. The first fraction becomes... Um, 36 over 12 minus 3 over 12. Okay, now that the denominators are the same, we can subtract the numerators and keep the denominators, all righty? 36 minus 6, I'm sorry, 36 minus 3 is 33 divided by 12. And then this is being multiplied by 2 over 1. All right, so there are two ways we can simplify this resulting fraction right here. We can either multiply or re and reduce or reduce and multiply. It doesn't really matter uh, the order. I like to reduce first and multiply, so it's simpler to do, okay? So 2 goes into itself once, and 2 goes into 12 six times, okay? So that equals 33 over 6. Now, is there anything common between any common factor between 33 and 6? The answer is yes. Both of them are divisible by 3. So we're going to divide the top and bottom by 3. And our final answer is going to be 33 over 3 is 11. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. So 11 over 2 is a simplified form of this original fraction that we have in question number one. All right, let's take a look at another example, question number two. So for question number two, let's say we are to simplify uh, the fraction, the expression three over two divided by one over four minus one minus two over three raised to the second power. So we were to simplify this using the order of operations, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do it. Now, uh, first things first, let's rewrite the problem. We have three over two divided by one over four minus parenthesis one minus two thirds square. So in the first fraction, you notice what is happening here? We're dividing a fraction by a fraction. So do you remember the shortcut we discussed in number one as to how to simplify scenarios like this? We are to keep change flip, right? So you keep the numerator, bring it down as three over two, change your division to a times, and then you flip the denominator to four over one. Remember, when you're dividing, it is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, okay? All right, and then we have a parenthesis situation here. Let's express this as one over one. We have to simplify, we have to carry out the operation in the parenthesis first. Remember, please excuse my Dan Sally. After that, then we'll do the exponent. The operation in the parenthesis is a subtraction between two fractions. Uh, so the denominators have to be identical. The LCD of 1 and 3 is 3, so times this by 3 top and bottom. So we have, what do we have? We have 3 over 3 minus 2 over 3 raised to the second power. Okay, directing our attention back to the first fraction, we can just um, cross-reduce. 
So uh, two goes here, one, two goes into four twice, three times two will give us six. Okay, we can write it as a fraction, six over one. We don't know if we're gonna need it yet, but we'll see. Minus uh, three, the denominators are the same here, so we just subtract the numerator and keep the denominator, okay? So that's gonna be one, three minus two is one over three square. Okay, so what is one over three square? Well, one over three square just simply means that you multiply it by itself, okay? So we have six over one minus one over three square just means one over three multiplied by one over three, okay? So if you carry out that multiplication, you end up with six over one minus one times one is one and three times three is nine. Okay, so the final op operation is a subtraction operation. In order to subtract fractions, we need the same denominator, okay? So multiply this by nine, top and bottom. Uh, fraction on the left, which gives us 54 over nine. Excellent, because it matches with the denominator of this fraction right here, one over nine. So since the denominators are the same, we can now subtract. Subtract the numerator 53 and keep the denominator over 9. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the final answer to question number 2. All right, so this that's how you apply the order of operations. Now, we're going to have you do four practice problems to demonstrate that you can uh, accurately apply the order of operations in simplifying fractions. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, it's now your turn. Um, we'd like you to go ahead and pause this video presentation and try the following. So the task is to uh, simplify the following um, using the order of operations. When you are done trying out these four practice problems, pause, um, play, click, click on the play button, and then we're gonna reveal what the correct answers are. All right, so go ahead and um, pause the video and try out these problems. Welcome back. So hopefully you had a chance to try these practice problems. Let's take a look at what the answers are. Answer to question number one is 55 over three. The answer to question number two is 15 over two. The answer to question number three is um, seven over 12. And the answer to question number four is 86 over 15. So how well did you do in these four practice problems? Let us know in the comment section below what your score is out of four. And if there are any problems here in this practice or in the tutorial that you would like more clarifications on, just let us know in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your preparation for Algebra 2, do give us a like or a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is extremely valuable to us. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel. We upload videos to our site on a regular um, basis. And do visit our website at mathgotserve.com for tons of support resources to help you in your studies of Algebra 2. And again, if you have any questions, comments, or special requests, just place it in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.